Hi golfers, this is PGA Head Golf Professional Don Archer at Blue Needles Golf Course and the Director of Instruction at the Don Archer Golf School. Today I'm going to talk about the grip and the grip. Uh, we have two different ways to think about the grip. We're going to talk about how we grip the club and the grip itself. So first off, when we talk about gripping the club, what I like to think about is whenever we stand, because we want our grip to be natural, whenever we're standing we see that and drop our hands, we see that our hands are faced, the back of our hands are faced forward. Uh, we don't stand natural with the palm of our hands facing forward. So what we want to do with the golf club is, is that we want to take a hold of the golf club, hold it out to the side, and just take a natural, uh, put our hand on there in a natural way to grip the club. So you see that the hand is not turned under like this when we grip the club. The hand is turned over into a, a natural position. So then we take that and we'll set that then back over into the front and what you'll see is is that the V formed by the thumb and the finger here uh, points pretty much toward the nose or up down the middle of the shaft up toward the center of the body and I'll discuss that a little bit further as we go along. First off we're going to talk about the three different types of grips. Um, the first grip that we're going to talk about is the ten finger grip or what people normally call a baseball grip. That's where we just grip the club like what we did normally where we raise it up. We're going to take the right hand to put it onto the club and we're going to take and put the thumb of the left hand into the lifeline on the right hand when we grip the club. So we're going to take the club and put it on and we're going to wrap the hand around the club and the fingers, the finger, the little finger and the forefinger of the other hand then will just fit together. So basically we just slide down and we put the two hands on the club. This is what we call the baseball grip or what we call the ten finger grip. Second grip we're going to talk about will be the interlocking grip. So basically the right hand still stays the same way as what we do uh, with the baseball grip except for when we bring the right hand onto the club we will lift the forefinger and we will take the little finger of the right hand and interlock it. That's why we call it the interlocking grip. And we will interlock those two fingers, again putting the thumb of the left hand into the lifeline on the right hand. So this now is what we call the interlocking grip. The third grip that we're going to talk about then, uh, again the left hand stays on the club in the same position as it was when we started on the baseball grip or ten finger and the interlocking. We'll bring the right hand in and we're going to put the right hand onto the club again with the thumb into the lifeline on the right hand and instead of interlocking and raising the little finger then will lap over top of the forefinger and this is what we call the overlapping grip. So we have what we call then the ten finger grip, the interlocking grip, and we have the overlapping grip. Now there's variations of those. I know that uh, if you uh, watch PJ Tour, you'll see that uh, if you know Jim Furyk, he plays with a double overlapping grip. But that's uh, for someone that's really handsy. I wouldn't recommend that grip uh, for an amateur. Uh, basically, probably the majority of people will use the interlocking grip. Okay, the reason that, that we have the three different types of grips, the baseball grip, it's pretty much uh, kind of a beginner's grip, uh, any size fingers uh, for a baseball grip or the ten finger grip just to get the hands on the club and, and be comfortable. Uh, the interlocking grip are for those uh, individuals that have a little bit smaller hands to hold the hands a little bit more together so that they work together. And then the overlapping grip uh, is for someone who has large hands, basically like I do, uh, has large hands that will do uh, the overlapping grip. Now on the grip itself, when we put the when we put the hand put the hand on the club to start with, the club will go into the fingers, which will go between between the first knuckle and the second knuckle, will fit into the fingers, and then the hand then will just wrap around the club. Now, let me. Uh, okay, now to get the working uh, get the hands working together. Uh, what I like to do is I like to have uh, an individual put uh, two tees and basically it's better if you use real long tees. I could even use a couple pencils if you wanted to just try it at home and you didn't have golf tees. Uh, just use a couple pencils or a couple tees to stick up 
and squeeze them between the thumb and the forefinger. So I'm going to put the uh, set the club over to the side uh, like I do when I'm going to get my normal grip on there. I'll bring that around to the front and what you're going to see is looking at it you'll see that this T especially if I'm looking from my side down you'll see that the T is lined up right down the middle of the shaft. I'm going to put the second hand on. Now this hand I'm going to use the overlap grip which is the grip that I use normally which is more comfortable for me to be able to show you. So I'm going to use the overlapping grip and when I put my hand on there you're going to see that those two T's are lined up with each other as I'm standing here and looking down they're down the middle of that shaft. Uh, so this is what uh, also what we call a neutral grip. This is where the V formed by the thumb and the by the thumb and the finger, the right finger uh, that goes on there, that V is points basically up the center of the body or toward the nose or toward the chin, uh, whatever that you want to say. So this is our basic, basic what we call a neutral grip. Now a weak grip would be if the hands then were rotated to the right, rotated to the right on the club, and there again you can still see that the T's are lined up together, not one to the right and one to the left. I still want the T's even with a if you use a weak grip to have the T's lined up. Then what we would call a strong grip would be if the hands were rotated to the right, which we call a right hand grip or a strong grip. But there again you can see the T's are lined up as I'm looking down. I don't have one here and one over here so I don't just turn one hand to make it strong. I turn both hands to make this strong. Now why would we use a strong grip, a weak grip, or a neutral grip? has to do basically with our hip turn and what we have with our mobility. Some people, some people have uh, some limitation problems where they have a hard time making a full turn. So what I would do if I was to take a, a small, like a, like a swing that I was going to do, and what I would look at and see that my belt buckle, according to my target, is pointed out to the right of my target, or barely to the right of my target. That is when I'd want to use the what we call the left hand grip or the weak grip. If I made the same thing and I made a little bit more of a hip turn, but not quite all the way toward the target, which would be pointed just a little bit to the right, but not straight toward the target, that would be where I would want to use more of a neutral grip. If I was to make a complete turn to where my belt buckle then is pointed toward my target, then I would want to use the right hand grip or what we call the strong grip, so it would be the strong grip or the right hand grip. Uh, there again you'd have to make some adjustments, uh, hit balls on the range, practice, determine which would be best for you. But if you don't quite make a turn, use a little bit weaker or neutral grip. If you get a full turn, then we want to make use the stronger grip. So that's uh, in, in, uh, in refreshing what we have is we have three different types of grips. We have the baseball grip, we have the interlocking where we interlock the little finger and the forefinger or the hands together and then we have the overlapping grip. Those are basically the three types of grips. And then also in review, why do we use one of those or the other? If you don't make a complete hip turn and your belt buckle is pointed to the right, you may want to use a weaker grip. If it turns just a little bit farther but not a total turn, use a neutral grip. But if you're able to get a complete hip turn and your target and your belt buckle is pointed toward the target, then you probably want to use a little stronger grip or what we call the right hand grip with the hands turned to the right. Now that's the grips, but what about the grip itself? The grip comes in basically uh, several different sizes. It comes in a standard grip, comes in a mid-size grip, comes in an over-large grip, and even comes in a jumbo size grip. The importance of the different sizes of grip has to do with the direction of the ball. Now, everyone wants to do two things. You want more distance and you want better direction. Well, the grip itself has to do with the direction of the ball. If you have a grip that is too small, so if this grip right here, if I take this grip right here and put my hands on it and I take my right hand off and we look at this grip, you can see how the heel of my hand is lapped over top of lapped over top of the other fingers underneath. That would make that grip a little bit too small for me. And I would need a little bit larger around, maybe a mid-size or an extra large grip. If I was to open my hand, if I was to open my hand to where 
you could see the grip between my four fingers, my fingers, and the heel of the club, then that grip would be a little, a little bit large. What we're looking for is when we grip the club with the right hand, we're looking for the two fingers of the right hand to just butt to the heel of the club. So that would be the right, the right uh, uh, size of uh, grip for me. So we talk about gripper grip. One grip is the way that we hold the club. The other grip is the size of the club. If you have problems with the size of your club, with size of your grip, or the grip itself, see your local PGA golf professional and get help on getting a proper grip and also a proper size grip. Thank you.